Scientists are still struggling to understand the mysterious Maya civilization. There is so much that they left behind. From secrets under the pyramids to the Maya apocalypse, let's take a look. Maya War Elephants Did the Maya have elephants? During the Ice Age, elephant-like creatures used to run rampant across North America. Everybody knows there were woolly mammoths, but there were a lot of other giant creatures too. For example, the Gomphothere, a weird prehistoric relative of the modern elephant. These creatures were hunted by the Clovis culture of North America 13,000 years ago. But did the elephantine monsters survive long enough to be used as weapons of war by the Maya? The evidence proves that prehistoric elephants lived in Mexico until very recently. At the ancient site of El Fin del Mundo in Sonora, archaeologists have found spearheads buried with the remains of gomphotheres. What's really amazing is that prior to this discovery, scientists agreed there were no prehistoric elephants in Mexico while humans were around. Finding tools used to hunt the elephants in Mexico obviously changes that. It shows that no matter how confident scientists are, they can always be wrong. Giant monster elephants did in fact live in Mexico alongside humans. Were they ever used by the Maya? Did Maya warriors go into battle on the backs of great beasts? There is evidence that suggests, yes, they did indeed have elephants. At the enigmatic Maya site of Copan, there are carved stelae that show what appear to be elephants. On these beautiful pieces of Maya art, you can clearly see the trunks, tusks, and eyes of elephants staring back at you. How could the Maya have created artistic representations of elephants if they hadn't seen them for themselves? Let me know your thoughts on this. The Secret World Under Mexico Underneath the streets of Mexico City, there lies a lost and secret world. Just a few feet under the modern capital are the ruins of temples, palaces, and incredible artifacts. But these aren't the remnants of the Maya. These are the remains of Mexico's other great civilization, the Aztec. It's been almost 500 years since Hernán Cortés destroyed the Aztec capital of Tenochtitlán. And still, the original foundations of that city are underneath modern Mexico City. In 1573, the Spanish began building one of the first great churches in the Americas. It's the Metropolitan Cathedral, built directly on the crushed dust of an Aztec temple. In 1978, electrical workers accidentally came across a monolith near the cathedral. The chance discovery resulted in an excavation that would go on for five years. The excavation unearthed Templo Mayor. That very temple, the Metropolitan Cathedral, was built upon. Templo Mayor is now a tourist destination in Mexico City's historic district, but only a fraction of it is available for viewing. The truth is that so much more is still underneath the cathedral, and indeed underneath the rest of the city. 21 million residents walk over the ghosts of the Aztec every single day. Discoveries are still made all the time. In 2015, archaeologists uncovered a skull rack. This is a barbaric instrument upon which Aztec warriors would display the skulls of sacrificial victims. By 2017, nearly 700 skulls were found that had once adorned the skull rack. Also in 2017, archaeologists found an ancient ball court during the renovation of a hotel. Just like the Maya, the Aztec played their own weird version of basketball using heavy rubber balls. And now it's shout out time! I want to give a big thank you to William House and Daniel Holland for supporting this channel. Thanks so much for being so awesome. Be sure to subscribe if you are new here for more videos like these. The Maya Pantheon If you had to guess how many gods and goddesses there were in the Maya Pantheon, what would your number be? Would you say there were a dozen gods? Would you estimate it was more than 100, less than 200? The truth is that as of right now, roughly 250 Maya deities have been identified. Maya religion was incredibly complicated. This was partly because of the way their civilization was structured. Unlike the Aztec, who existed as a single state with a universal cultural belief system, the Maya were very spread out. Their civilization consisted of various political entities, a lot of cities, and different beliefs in each region. This led to gods morphing and changing depending on where in the kingdom you lived. 
there were hundreds of gods, with many of them representing the same things but having different names. Paul Schellhaus was the first scholar who compiled a detailed list of Maya deities in 1910. This was even before the script used by the Maya was deciphered, so the list wasn't very comprehensive. But now that the Maya language is more understood, scholars know the names and importance of their hundreds of gods. Chuck was likely one of the most important. The Maya didn't have a single supreme deity, scientists don't think so anyway, but Chuck was one of the most revered for being the god of lightning and rain. For the Maya, rain was life. Chuck can be seen in Maya stonework depicted as a human with reptilian features. There were other prominent deities as well. The sun god Ahau Kin was extremely important. He was the divine deity of kings. The moon goddess Chel was a key figure, as was the rainbow goddess Chak Chel and the childbirth goddess Ish Chel. The rainbow goddess also happened to be the ruler of death and destruction. It seems that rainbows weren't particularly nice things to the Maya, associated with death instead of happiness at leprechauns. The Nesting Doll Pyramid At the famous archaeological site of Chichen Itza in Mexico's Yucatan Peninsula, archaeologists made a shocking discovery. Researchers used new technology to take a peek underneath the legendary Kukulkan Pyramid, hoping to spot something interesting. They hadn't imagined there would be two previously unknown pyramids buried underneath it. Scientists are comparing the pyramid to a Russian nesting doll. On the outside, it looks like a single pyramid, but underneath its outer shell are two much smaller pyramids. What could their purpose have possibly been? The Kukulkan Pyramid isn't the biggest pyramid in the world. It's quite tiny when placed against behemoths like the Great Pyramid of Giza. The thing only stands 90 feet tall, yet it still contains two additional pyramids. Not to mention, it's an incredible sight to see. Stairs lead to the top of the pyramid where the old temple looms over the landscape. You can only imagine how many severed heads roll down those steep steps during brutal sacrificial rituals. The best guess scientists have right now is that the structure was built in three phases. First, a much smaller pyramid of only 33 feet, then a slightly bigger one, and much later, the final rendition built over the bones of the others. This would have been between 550 and 800 AD. As for how the discovery was made, it was thanks to 3D electrical tomography. It's an incredible bit of technology that measures electrical signals by injecting current into a structure. Unfortunately, though, there is no viable way currently to see what's hidden in the other two layers without destroying the whole pyramid. The Serpent Warrior Chichen Itza is one of Mexico's most famous archaeological sites for a very good reason. You've already seen the impressive Kukulkan Pyramid and how it contains two other secret pyramids. But there are so many other incredible things going on at Chichen Itza. Archaeologists were recently removing an old garbage heap when they came across a sculpted warrior. This new discovery was made at the Casa Colorada complex near the Maya's great observatory El Caracol. Archaeologists with Mexico's National Institute of Anthropology and History uncovered a magnificently sculpted warrior's head. He was adorned with a feather headdress and an incredible serpent helmet. It's one of the coolest artifacts ever dug from the ground here. The sculpted head isn't that big, only about a foot tall, but the serpent helmet is truly something to see. The warrior's face is surrounded by the serpent's jaws, making him look as if he is wearing the snake's head over his own. In Maya culture, serpent symbolism was everywhere. You may have heard of jaguar warriors, elite fighters who went into battle dressed like wildcats, but there were also serpent warriors. These were unique Maya soldiers who participated in religious ceremonies. They dressed themselves in serpent-like clothes and acted as emissaries for the gods of the supernatural realm. For the Maya, the serpent was all-powerful. The serpent represented life and death, the cycle of existence, and cosmic power. The Apocalypse for those who were around in 2012, you'll never forget the worldwide panic that the world was coming to an end. Everybody was talking about the end of the Maya calendar on December 21st, 2012. There wasn't widespread belief, but some people were definitely nervous that the end was nigh. 
It's 2023 and the apocalypse still hasn't come, so were the Maya wrong in their predictions? What's the deal with the Maya apocalypse anyway? In 1800 BC, the early Maya civilization looked to the stars. They had a fantastic understanding of astronomy and mathematics. This allowed them to create one of the first accurate calendars in the world. How did they get so smart? The agreed hypothesis among mainstream scientists is that the Maya were good at science. It's that simple. However, others claim they were visited by an alien civilization that gave them advanced wisdom of the cosmos. Controversial researcher Eric von Daniken claimed the Maya were visited by an alien god who said it would return thousands of years in the future to end humanity. This god was Quetzalcoatl, the feathered serpent. In Maya mythology, the entity was indeed worshipped as a god. I told you before about the importance of the serpent. Well, Quetzalcoatl was the embodiment of the serpent and its powers. He was the almighty ruler of the Maya universe. It's also true that the Maya believed Quetzalcoatl was responsible for their vast scientific knowledge. They told stories of how Quetzalcoatl visited Earth, assisting the Maya in their advancements, and then left. But the Maya also thought that one day, their serpent god would return to the planet. Most historians accept the story of Quetzalcoatl as a fantastic myth. They don't think it's any more realistic than the story of Zeus or any other ancient gods. Eric von Daniken, on the other hand, is a staunch believer in Quetzalcoatl representing an alien overlord. Daniken has also suggested our understanding of the Maya calendar is flawed. He says their calendar hasn't run out yet. There still could be time for their god to return. The Great Wall of Maya You've heard about the Great Wall of China, but what about the Great Wall of the Maya? Scientists have uncovered the ruins of an enormous wall that once circled the ancient city of Tikal. It's changing the way historians understand Maya culture and the development of their cities. Archaeologists have been struggling to understand the extent of the Maya Empire for years. One of the main issues when researching this ancient civilization has been that the remnants of them are lost in the jungle. But with the recent development of LiDAR technology, scientists don't need to trek through jungles to find ruins anymore. They can now fly a helicopter over a region and blast it with lasers, revealing secrets that would have been impossible to find otherwise. One of the guys who has been using LiDAR extensively over the past few years is National Geographic explorer Albert Lin. He used LiDAR to search through the Tikal archaeological zone. The lasers revealed houses and residential mouths densely crowding the city. Tikal looks like a humble ruin from the ground, but in reality, it was once an enormous metropolis. Tikal had suburbs and neighborhoods branching in every direction. Albert also uncovered the remains of a wall. Lasers beamed onto the forest floor showed the foundations of a humongous barrier that previously encapsulated Tikal, segregating it from other cities. What Albert doesn't know is why they built a huge wall. Who were the people of Tikal trying to keep out? This discovery could have major implications for understanding how different Maya cities got along. If Tikal was surrounded by a great stone barrier, it could mean that Maya cities went to war with one another. Maybe they weren't even part of the same empire. The Maya could have been constantly at war like the early kingdoms of Europe. The Ritual Canoe Two years ago, in 2021, archaeologists uncovered a canoe at the bottom of a cenote in Mexico. After careful analysis, researchers are now saying the canoe was most likely put inside of the watery sinkhole as part of a mysterious ritual. The canoe was possibly used as a marker to indicate an entrance to the underworld. The initial discovery came as a big shock. Divers at the bottom of the cenote, located not far from Chichen Itza, identified the canoe 15 feet beneath the surface. It was the first intact canoe ever found in the region of the Maya. The discovery was great, but nobody was sure exactly what it meant. For the Maya, cenotes were hugely important. These freshwater pools were a source of both life and spirituality. The fresh water helped the Maya to survive, but they also believed that at the bottoms of the cenotes were portals to the underworld. Archaeologist Guillermo de Anda said the Maya believed in three basic layers of the cosmos. There were the heavens far above, earth in the middle, and the underworld way down below. But these weren't necessarily mystical realms. 
The Maya thought caves and cenotes could act as entryways into the land of the dead. The canoe was not the only thing found submerged in the cenote. There was also the footbone of a woman and some animal skeletons. 38 skeletons to be exact, of dogs, eagles, turkeys, and armadillos. All evidence points to the cenote once being used in rituals. These animals were likely killed and then tossed into the water as offerings for the gods. It makes sense that animals were sacrificed, but what's the deal with the canoe? Researchers found that it wouldn't have floated very well. Its prow and stern were too heavy, meaning it wouldn't have worked practically as a vessel. It was probably created specifically for a ritual. They haven't managed to get it out of the water yet, but they have made multiple dives to steady it. Thanks for watching! Be sure to subscribe and let me know if you'd like to see more discoveries about the Maya or the Aztec in the comments below. See you next time. Bye.